Hello, and welcome to Everything is Spooky in the Dark, the podcast for WanderingCrystal.com. I'm your host, Crystal, and today we'll be talking about Mary King's clothes. Hidden deep beneath the Royal Mile in Edinburgh sits an ancient street that was once festering with disease brought in by the plague. Causing devastation in the country of Scotland, the plague infected thousands of people, covering them in rotting, pus-filled boils, with swollen glands, and uncontrollable vomiting. Mary King's Close was sealed off from the world, leaving all the people suffering from the plague trapped beneath. These people had to be quarantined and were ultimately left to die as the residents in the city above went on with their everyday lives as normal. At least, that's what I thought happened at Mary King's Close. However, the real truth is not quite as sinister and thankfully, not quite as horrible. Life in 1645 was difficult. Edinburgh was an unhygienic place where disease and sewage flowed freely throughout the streets. Mary King's Close was an overcrowded street in Edinburgh. Surrounded by tenement buildings, it was a place where the bubonic plague thrived. Without a proper sewage system to remove waste, Every household owned a bucket that spent all day in a corner of the cramped living quarters, rapidly filling with urine and feces. Worry not though, as these buckets would be emptied once a day when the contents were thrown into the streets with a warning cry of, Gardy Loo! So that those below would know what was coming and be sure to get out of the way. Of course, there was always some splashback that occurred. The vile cargo would run down the sloped streets towards the Noor Loch, the heavily polluted lake that was once located in now what is known as the Prince's Street Gardens. Have you ever wondered why the grass is so green and lush there? Well, now you know. These unsanitary conditions created a breeding ground for the real cause of the plague. Flea-infested rats ridden with bacteria that took over the narrow, overcrowded labyrinth of closes in Edinburgh. So how did Edinburgh treat these plague victims? Enter the plague doctor. These doctors believe that the plague was caused by airborne miasmas rather than the bacteria carrying fleas. To combat this, they would dress head to toe in thick leather cloaks and bird-like masks filled with sweet lavender and herbs, protecting them from the infected air. Luckily for the plague doctors, this leather clothing prevented the disease-ridden rats from biting through and infecting the doctors with the plague. Can you imagine? I assume this means getting bitten by rats was a regular thing back in the 1600s. I never really thought about that until now. You know, just another day and three more rat bites. That was the norm. In the early stages of infection, the doctors were able to seal off the open wounds and boils on plague victims. These boils were usually located in the armpit or groin and the plague doctors would catarize the open wound by sticking a burning hot pole over it. This was incredibly painful, but the treatment was quite successful as the wounds were now closed and it wasn't as easy for infections and dirt to enter the body. After the plague passed through Edinburgh, a lot of the closes started to decay and transformed into dilapidated, filthy, overcrowded places. The council decided to seal off these closes and to build on top of them. 
The new areas were now places where merchants could conduct their business. Some of the closes were destroyed, while others stayed intact and were used as a stable ground to support the new buildings above. Mary King's Close was partially destroyed at Colburn Street, leaving the rest intact under the city chambers. Before Edinburgh destroyed each close, including Mary King's Close, all of the residents living within these streets moved out, leaving no one behind. Plague victims were taken care of in Edinburgh, and the stories of those suffering from the plague being sealed off from the world below were just rumors. Nowadays, the real Mary King's Close operates as a tourist attraction, which takes tour groups down below Edinburgh and allows you to almost step back in time to see what life was like in the 17th century. You'll be joined by an authentic character guide, such as a foul clinger, which was a person who would take plague victims outside the city boundaries and go back and burn their homes and belongings to help rid Edinburgh of the disease. Be ready to leave the modern world behind and step into the dark, narrow close to experience what life was truly like. You'll get to see how tiny the living spaces really were and you'll get to see the sewage bucket. You'll be able to walk through areas that held cattle and enter rooms that are still lined with toxic wallpaper, which was created with the use of arsenic. Don't worry, it's not enough to harm you if you don't touch it. Now, before I release you back to your current reality and away from the history of Mary King's Close, I must tell you the story of Abandoned Annie. With such a dark history and so much death, the story of ghosts always tends to become entwined with the real history that plagues historic sites around the world. Mary King's Close is no stranger to paranormal stories either. When the Close was first discovered in the 1990s and long before it was open to the public, a psychic named Aiko Gibo, and I do apologize, uh, she comes from Japan and I'm not good with Japanese pronunciations. She was touring the close with a film crew. Aiko claims that she spotted the spirit of a young girl who said she had died from the plague. This young girl said she had been abandoned by her family and was searching for her mother. This prompted Aiko to purchase a Barbie doll donned with tartan for Annie. This Barbie now sits in a room deep within the close. I'm not sure if Annie still lingers through the ancient streets, but if she does, at least with her new doll, she is no longer lonely. And that's it. As you walk along the Royal Mile, just think about all of the history that is right beneath your feet. If you're interested in visiting Mary King's Close, please check out the link to my blog post listed in the podcast description for more information on where and how to book your trip to the past. Thank you so much for listening to Everything is Spooky in the Dark, the podcast for wanderingcrystal.com.